Hello students, so now, so now let's uh, move on to chapter 8 which is on reliability and channel coding. So what we are basically do, going to do in this chapter is how to detect um, and sometimes also correct uh, errors that are induced uh, or um, uh, um, uh, the errors that are um, yeah induced into the uh, messages due to transmission. So for example, if uh, we are sending a sequence of bits due to some natural factors like uh, lightning or power surge or some interference between the signals, some bits could invert from a 0 to 1 or a 1 to 0. So that's called the bit inversion. Okay. So uh, if I am going to send a sequence of bits, so for example, uh, something like this. <coughs> now how does the receiver make sure that the sender really sent these bits okay uh, we are looking from a, uh, we are not looking from a security point of view so that's a entirely different thing uh, just due to some natural factors uh, one or more of these bits could get inverted uh, from a 0 to 1 or a 1 to 0 so how does receiver make sure that it gets what is supposed to receive so for that we'll use two ways one is called error detection mechanisms okay and the other would be called error correction mechanisms okay so uh, it could be something like what is this so what we will do is when you want to send a message uh, at the sender side, you have the message, you compute what is called the error detection code for the message. So by EDC, I mean error detection code. So the error detection code is, um, at least ideally should be like, if I even change one bit of the message, the error detection code should change okay and the size of the error detection code is not dependent on the size of the message it depends on what algorithm you are using to compute the error detection code we'll see uh, three algorithms in this chapter that are used to compute the error detection code and as you'll notice for order with the message size you would compute error detection code of a certain size depending on how what you fix as the size of the error detection code and the corresponding algorithm okay similarly we could compute now before that so what we could do with the error detection code with the error detection code we could only detect the presence of the error not the uh, not able to correct the error the sense what will happen is the sender com for the for the given message the sender computes the error detection code and sends the receiver so what the receiver will do is the receiver will take up the message as it is received again the receiver can demarcate what is the message and what is the error detection code because as i said the error detection code is going to be of a fixed size and the message is also going to be of a certain size so the receiver can easily distinguish between the message and the error detection code where each stands so the receiver will take up only the message portion of the packet that it receives and recompute the error detection code on its own so the receiver will recompute it on its own so if the size of the error detection code uh, not the size if the value of the error detection code computed by the receiver matches with the error detection code that comes along with the message so the error detection code computed by the receiver the edc computed by the receiver matches with the edc uh, coming along with the message then what happens then the receiver concludes that the message came without any error now there is no hundred percent uh, guarantee that the message is not corrupted 
okay uh, again it depends on the algorithm but if the error detection code computable receiver matches with the error detection code com uh, that comes along with the message then it concludes that the message came without any error again uh, the uh, the truth behind this depends really on the algorithm that is being used as we will see okay so that's all the receiver can do it can only detect the presence or absence of an error uh, or the prob uh, the chances that the message is corrupted once a receiver concludes that a message is corrupted then it drops the message okay now ideally what happens is when we um, do this uh, sending and receiving of messages uh, later we'll see this transmission control protocol where there is a need for some reliability so as part of this reliability the receiver has to send an acknowledgement uh, sorry the receiver sends, sends an acknowledgement for uh, every correct message received so if the receiver thinks that it got a message that is corrupted then the receiver will not acknowledge for that message so if you want reliability the sender has to kind of buffer the message until it gets an acknowledgement for that if the sender doesn't get the acknowledgement within a timeout so the sender if the sender um, does not get an acknowledgement within a timeout period the sender retransmits the message okay along with its uh, detection code so the receiver will again receive the message recompute uh, compute the error detection code on that message and then if it matches it sends an acknowledgement so if you want reliability you have to buffer until you get the acknowledgement and if you don't get the acknowledgement within a timeout period you retransmit the message okay now so this is where the error detection code uh, very similar idea uh, we have what is called the error correction code so with an error correction code what happens is let me just use this space the uh, sender computes what is called the error correction code that on the message again depending on the algorithm being used the size of the error correction code uh, is specified and sends along with the message now the receiver will recompute the error correction code for the message being received and see if the error correction codes match if the error correction codes doesn't match it means that there is some error in the message received and using the error correction code itself the receiver can fix the error on its own okay so the receiver can fix the error on its own So there is no need for the sender to wait for an acknowledgement and retransmit the message if the act is not received. Uh, or right, or you can say and or it, it is not received. So what is the thing here? Uh, there's no need for the sender to uh, buffer the message as well as there's no need for it to retransmit because it's not going to receive an acknowledgement so the receiver can fix error on its own okay now uh, there may be some uh, maybe uh, I have to take it back uh, let's see um, if if the message is lost due to condition right so assuming uh, this assumes that messages are not dropped due to condition if a message is dropped due to condition in the net internet or the network then you do need an acknowledgement process so let's right now assume there's no condition in the network so there's no need for an acknowledgement okay so we'll talk about condition later all right so the error correction code you send the uh, you compute the error correction code on the message send it the receiver uh, computes error correction code on its own if it matches then it assumes that the message came without any corruption and if it doesn't match 
it still can go ahead and fix the error all right so there's no need for an acknowledgement or the retransmission provided there's no condition all right so let's assume like that all right now so if that's going to be the case why we need something called error detection code because we can use always error correction code but as I symbolically indicated in this picture, you can notice the size of an error correction code for a given message, again, say messages of say 1000 bits, uh, the two messages uh, that we're using here are the same size, for a given message size, uh, as well as also for, um, uh, uh, what is more important is this, um, to detect some x number of bit inversions what we mean by bit inversion i told already one bit changing to uh, from zero to one or a one to zero that's called a bit inversion so if you want to detect x such number of bit inversions the size of an error detection correction code is far greater than size of an error detection code so that's the thing to detect some x number of bit inversions the size of an error correction code is always far greater than the size of an error detection code right so that's why there's a trade-off if you want to detect say one bit inversions all right the size of an error correction code is going to be far greater than the size of an error detection code. All right, so which, with one bit inversion, which means we can detect only one bit being changed in the message, as we'll see in, uh, in an example. All right, so let's now, right now, just think, uh, assume that the size of the error correction code is always going to be much, much larger than the size of the error detection code. So it really depends when we want to use each of them, when we want to use an error correction code and when we want to use an error detection code. Okay, so now that uh, leads to an issue uh, depending on whether we want, so the question could be when to use an error detection code and when to use an error correction code. Now, if the channel is reliable, if the channel is reliable means what? Whatever we send reaches the receiver. This is, as I said, without any condition uh, and without any loss, uh, with a high probability. So, um, whatever we send reaches the receiver with a high probability without being uh, without being corrupted then there's no need to always compute error correction code because whatever we send reaches the receiver more likely without any corruption so why we want to compute error correction huge error correction code on each message so we'll just compute the error detection code on each message attach along with the message and send to the receiver if at all there is some corruption then uh, we won't get the acknowledgement so then we'll retransmit the message after timing out but the probability of that happening is quite low why because uh, the situation is the channel is reliable right so the channel is reliable there is no need to uh there is no need to compute the um error correction code for every message compute air or an error correction code for or these okay for every message and send along with the message so instead we could simply compute the error detection code for every message and send along with it if at all there is any corruption um, receiver will not 
knowledge for the message and the sender will end up retransmitting the message and uh, the uh, number of such retransmissions is anticipated to be low because channel is highly reliable on the other hand if the channel is not reliable which means whatever we send is likely to be corrupted then then it makes sense to compute the error correction code and send along with the message because we do um, we, um, do to avoid the frequent retransmission because if whatever we send is going to be corrupted then we need to frequently retransmit the message if you choose for error detection code on the other hand if you choose an error correction code there's no need to do retransmission because you, even if there's an error uh, uh, induced in the message then the receiver can correct the error on its own okay so we have to do a trade-off analysis here because for every uh, message, if you have to compute error correction code, it's going to be a huge thing. Uh, but um, uh, if you go for error detection code, the chances are we have to frequently retransmit the message and recompute error detection code. So that's going to eat up the bandwidth. If you are going to say, transmit the same message several times, it's a wastage of bandwidth. On the other hand, it's also a wastage of bandwidth if you compute such a huge error correction code and send along with the message, but we are doing it only once for every message. So you see the trade-off, okay? So are you going to send something like this several times? So that's an issue. That's basically what it is. Are we going to send the same message several times like this? Compute along with the error detection code. Okay, are we going to send this because it's, it's possible that the message could get corrupted uh, several times, right? Or instead of going like that, are we going to do something like this? Okay, so we have to choose the best. If, if we end up doing multiple retransmissions, then it's better to just send a message along with a huge error correction code. If we do not need to retransmit several times, then it's better to just send this once, like something like what I show here, send the message along with the error detection code once, and if at all it gets corrupted, we'll end up retransmitting it. Why we need to compute the error correction code uh, and as a huge block of it and send it along with the message every time. There's no need for it if the channel is highly reliable. If the channel is not highly reliable, it's not reliable, then we will go with um, error correction code okay so that's what it is all right we'll stop with this uh, let's see